Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over today's NHL slate, a uh, little six-game slate, and I want to just kind of debut something for uh, the True DFS members that I've been working on, and I've finally been able to trot it out, is when you are a premium subscriber and you get the uh, access to the, uh, the Sheets for all the sports, I finally was able to put in projected lines uh, for the hockey slates. It took a while, but... Um, when you go onto the site and you'll see it kind of listed this way, all the way on the right, you'll see EV line and power play line. It'll make the building of your, you know, of your stacks uh, a lot easier. If you don't want to have an optimizer do it for you, which is something I also recommend. Um, and we'll get into that. So what we're going to do is similar to usual. We're going to uh, analyze this slate first from a hand building perspective, meaning we're just going to look at the plays and build lineups, just kind of visualizing it. And then we're going to go back and use SaberSim to, to use its algorithm to, to for the correlation, all that stuff, to, to build lineups for us and see where things kind of align. And usually what I found is when the hand-built stuff coincides with the, the, the SaberSim stuff, you really have some strong plays. Now, again, this doesn't, you know, take into consideration ownership, which is obviously really important. But when you get into Saber Sim build, you can set your sliders to account for ownership fade as little or as much as you want. So, um, you know, one thing about the slate, which is really interesting, you have all these games uh, have a pretty decent total in general. You know, you have the, the, the Edmonton game, which is a little bit higher than the others, but not by a lot. Um, so if you find that, you know, let's say the Edmonton game will get like incredible amount of ownership. It's not, it's, it's not as if it's, it projects to be that much better. Now, again, when I'm first eyeballing, this doesn't look like it's going to be better at all. So that's, that's something else. But when you look at the slate of these games, I think that a lot of these games could go off. Um, everything's pretty close and the totals are very healthy. So um, if you're playing MME, I would not recommend you going completely locked into one game, uh, I, I think you should spread out your exposure somewhat. Um, okay, so let's take a look. And, and again, the first thing I like to do is I, I like to look at the goalies and see, and, and I'd like to try to play the cheapest goalie that projects well. And fortunately, our life is kind of easy today because our top projected goalie is also the top overall value on the slate which is right here, and that's Edmonton. And what's also cool about it is kind of a high total game, so it's possible that you might want to play Florida um, on the other side, which might make the Edmonton goalie not that high owned. I mean, it says 23%, but I don't know. Uh, on the other hand, if Florida turns out to be a good stack, then you can use that uh, to offset the 23% ownership of, of, of Campbell. So, but for now, we're going to start with just forgetting about ownership for a second, put the best plays in. And that's what I always like to do is find the cheapest, well-projected goalie. And this one's pretty easy. Um, now, again, at, for those of you who have watched this the first time, I'm ranking everything by Sheets Value Score, which is kind of a combination of points per dollar and, and just overall raw points. And... It's interesting that the goalie is 10 points higher than the next guy. And the other thing that's interesting is there's no real standout play over the others. Um, so what you're trying to look for are kind of clusters of players from the same team. And with them, the next thing I always try to have you do is try to make sure that they're on the same lines. But now what you could probably do is, is cross-check against the EV lines and power play lines right here on the sheet. Um, I have to crunch this a little bit together because it's a little bit uh, thin and thick. Let's just do this. So this way, yeah. So we can at least see everything. So this is EV line over here. This power plant over here. But the first thing you'll notice is that, yeah, the top overall play looks to be a cheapo from Florida, but it's not the the the, the, the best play by a lot. And I don't see any other Florida's kind of in the top group. So what I'd probably do is keep Lundell on my radar as a possible one-off. Um, that, that's what I'd like to do with these high, well-projected cheapos. 
that don't really correlate with anybody else is use those as kind of a, a well-meant, a cheapo, uh, one-off. So let's put that in for now, actually. Uh, it, it is a late game, so we could be we could be somewhat diligent, make sure that we put that in the utility. Um, Lundell, at least in Florida. Crap. Uh, yeah, maybe we shouldn't do that since we're already using Campbell. We'll get back to that. Next guy I see is Saad from St. Louis. And unfortunately, I don't see much until you get down to, uh, to Tarasenko. So we'll hold off on that for now. But again, this one could also be kind of a decent one-off. Um, so let's put him in. Let's put in Saad as a one-off, just at least to get something going. And then we start to get into business here. So, so you have Eichel and Stone you know, two of the top overall values. And not only that, but they're on the same team and they're on the same EV line and same same power play line. So this is where you really want to start. And then you go down to Marchesol, who's also well projected here. And he is not on the number one EV line. He's number two, but he's on the first power play line. So, so that's good enough for me. So what I'm going to start is by putting all these guys in. So Eichel, and then March Assaults. And then who's the other guy? Stone? Um, Mark Stone Wing. Okay. Um, so what you'd like to do is you want to get like a fourth. So um, after you, if you have three of, of a good stack, then you don't have to worry about really the projections much to get the fourth guy in. So you could do Petrangelo. That makes certainly a lot of sense. Uh, so let's put him in. And this is this is expensive, okay? But then another thing that you can do is check this out. Now you can go back if you want and play Logan Thompson at goalie to correlate there, but I, I think we're going to need to save money. So let's keep these four Vegas guys in for now. And let's see this one. You have Chandler Stevenson would be a fifth. So if you wanted to go full on five man, you would go Chandler Stevenson. I don't know if we can get away with this because now we're at 38, 50 a player, but now you can do this. Um, so you have a one, two, three, four, five man from, from Vegas, a one off from, from St. Louis. And at 38, 50 a man remaining, what you probably want to do is just kind of rank these by, well, first by sheets values. So we'll see if there's anything really cheap that we forgot. Well, there's Tyson Barry right there at defense. Pretty strong, right? Uh, 3,600. And then it becomes really easy to pick out some, some, some cheapo, some center. Um, so, yeah, so you could build with, bank, with, uh, with Vegas pretty handily, actually, uh, with a lot of options. Now, if you didn't want to do that, let's see what else there is. I just mentioned there was, uh, well, let's look at the next one. There's Braden Point, who rates really high, and there's Killorn and Kucherov. So you could do one with Tampa. Let's see what that looks like. We'll go Braden Point. We'll go Kucherov. And we'll go... Well, Stamco is really expensive, but Kilmore, uh, 3,700. Uh, so you use those three. Let's take a look at where they are. They're 1-1. One, one. So glad I added this. This is 2-1. So that means we're going for a power play. Then 1-1. One, one. And then Stamco is, is, again, part of the power play. So we could put him in. He's expensive. But you could play this, you know, and then you could go back. And that one off, right? Sod works. Talked about him before. Go back to Barry for Edmonton. And this is easy, easy breezy, right? You know, you could add a fifth Tampa if you want. So I think Tampa and Vegas would be the two kind of ways to start. The, these hand-built lineups. But before we kind of uh, disappear from that, let, let's let's go back to Edmonton because this guy keeps showing up uh, 
in these other builds. So let's start with Tyson Berry. And then we'll go back to what else you might have from Edmondson. So Ryan Nugent Hopkins is the next guy I have listed here. And he is a 2-1. You know what I'm saying? We don't want to mean by 2-1. Second EV uh, and one power play line. So if we go Tyson Barry, he's 2-1 as well. So again, we're trying for the power play um, group. So we'll put in Ryan Nugent Hopkins. And then I know the other guy. Uh, I'm sure Connor McDavid, Dryside, all these guys are both really expensive. And Hyman. I wonder if you can get all these guys in. Let's see. McDavid, Dreisaitl, Hyman. Yeah, I mean, you can do this. You can absolutely do this. Because once again, you have that sod at 3,100. It's not easy, you know, but look, you have Kalorn. Remember him at 3,700? He could be a decent one-off. Um, what other cheapos are there? You could go back to Lundell if you don't want to play Campbell. But again, as you're seeing, it becomes very useful to save money at goalie. Um, then you have Engval at 2,500. So, so there are cheapos that you can play. Um so overall, that's what I, I like. You know, you could play Edmonton, Vegas, or uh, Tampa rather easily. Um, and I think that's the way I would go in the hand-built uh, hand world. Now let's now go into Saberson. And again, we don't care as much about the projections anymore because we're going to upload them here. Now, again, if you're a true DFS member that is a uh, Sabersim subscription, you can just go right to Sabersim from the true DFS page. Um, or if you go directly through Sabersim, you could do it, you know, you could upload your projections any way you want. And I keep kind of like a, a raw file of where they all come from. So I, I have the ability to do this. So upload them, exclude unlisted players. Uh, these guys are all out. So let's just exclude them for now. So what you see what it's happened here, it's replaced the Sabersim original projections with mine and Sabersim's ownerships with mine. And then we're going to build lineups. Let's build 150. And we'll see what kind of exposure we get. You think we get a bunch of Vancouver, uh, Vegas or Edmonton or Tampa or neither. You know, we've had a good run in the last couple of uh, slate previews where Sabersim has agreed with me, but sometimes it doesn't. Sabersim can be a fickle beast. So let's see. Um, wow, all the Edmonton, pretty much. Uh, but look at all these guys. Listen, I, I'm kind of happy. Edmonton, Tampa, Vegas. Look at team stacks. Yep, yep. Top three highest owned. Tampa, Edmonton, and Ve and and Vegas. So I would. That's what I would do. Um, I I would number one. I would if you're playing multiple lineups. I would use Sabersim to help build your lineups like this. Um, and if you're hand building, I would just do the, do it exactly the way I did it, you know, not necessarily that exact lineup, but that's the way, that's the process. Now, the other thing I would do is if you were, if you were multi-entering is I would take a look and see the stacks, uh, stack types here. See here, I, I don't like too many of these kind of off the wall stacks. I would want to make sure that I had pretty much all of them at the very most, not the very most, but. Four, I, I like either four three and higher, meaning four three, five two, maybe even five zero, and and, and six. You know, I, I don't want to mess around with these four twos, three two twos, or whatever it is. I really think that that stacking and taking advantage of all that correlation in uh, in hockey is really important. So, uh, so what I would do, this is what you could do, is well, you can cheat a little bit, but let's do a minimum exposure of, say, uh, 30%, 4-3, and then we could do a minimum of 30%, 5-2, and then, and then we'll do a minimum of 10%, uh, 6-0. And 
five zeros or five any, and we'll apply. Well, it's going to want me to send the exposures again, so I could do that. Send exposures, and then we'll build it again. And I, sometimes it's, it doesn't happen too often, but sometimes when you change the stacking parameters like that, it will affect your exposures in, in a meaningful way. It doesn't happen too often, though. You'd think it actually would happen more. Um, that there are some guys that are just so so correlative that you're only going to get to them if you stack. Where some guys are kind of more one offy, and you would get to them if you didn't, you know, if you didn't have five five twos and four threes and six zeros and stuff. What I found is that it really, boy, it's really not that much of a difference. Okay, so we finished it finished two hundred sixty eight of the five hundred. Uh, it seems to be kind of maybe maybe it's on its uh, coffee break or something. So let's just stop it for now, and then we'll see what it did. Um, now the stack times, yeah, mostly five twos, four threes, five zeros, and sixes. And I'll probably end up xing these out just for my OCD. And then let's see the team stacks again. Yep, Edmonton, Vegas, Tampa, still okay. All right. Uh, Nice little handy slate, and there are some options. So um, if you don't like any of these three, I will say this, that the other guys are pretty close, and they're probably going to be lower owned than the ones I've talked about. So proceed at own risk, uh, but that's it. Good luck, everybody.